there and welcome back to another session of In The Labs with me, Becky. And this month, I'm going to show you how to create this table and stool set. So we've got some real interesting techniques that we're going to look at here. I'm going to show you how we can bend wood like this. I'm also going to show you how we can cut textures into plywood to reveal all of those really pretty layers. And I'm also going to show you how we can incorporate resin into our projects. So let's go back a few days and take a look at the build. Okay, so before I created uh, my design, um, I didn't actually really know what it was that I wanted to create. However, uh, I wanted to incorporate some techniques uh, that I've been looking at over the months and that have really fascinated me. So I knew what it was that I wanted to do, I just didn't know how to apply it. So what were the techniques? Uh, so the first one is bending wood. Uh, secondly, I've always been fascinated by the look of plywood that has been cut in a way uh, that it reveals all of the different layers. So two, I wanted to cut textures into plywood. Uh, and then the final thing that I wanted to explore was incorporating resin uh, with wood. So I've seen a few images knocking around on Pinterest uh, of jewellery that has uh, wood with resin. Um, and you may have seen the live wood river tables. Uh, they're quite popular at the moment. So it's two planks of wood uh, with resin going through the middle to create the kind of stream river effect. And so these were the three techniques that I wanted to try, uh, but I didn't know how to apply them. Okay, so uh, after uh, quite a bit of thinking of what I was going to make, I decided that I'm going to make this table and stool set. So this was my initial kind of concept drawing after many uh, different uh, designs. This is the one that I've settled on. So we're incorporating all the three techniques that I wanted to use. So these stools, uh, they're going to look like kind of cable reels, cotton reels. Uh, so that's where the bendy wood is going to come in. Uh, the textures are going to be cut on top of the stool seats as well as the table top. And then because we're cutting away at the tabletop and the seats, we need to make it practical. So we're going to pull resin in, uh, clear resin, so we can see that texture, uh, but it's going to flatten it off so it becomes uh, more useful again. And so I've cut textures before, uh, but not into plywood. Uh, but the bending wood and using resin, I'm a complete beginner at it. I've never done it before, so this really was more of an experiment for me, uh, trying out these new techniques. Uh, so let's see how I get on with those. Okay, so bending wood, so how do we do that? Uh, so I did quite a bit of research into bending wood and uh, one thing that I found um, that looked quite successful was kerf cutting. So kerf is defined as the width of the material that is removed by a cutting process and the more cuts you create uh, the more flexible it makes your material. And there are two different ways that I've come across. One is like this uh, kind of cut here where you're cutting through the thickness of the material but leaving uh, a very thin layer in order for you to be able to bend that. Um, and a second is uh, this kind of cut. So cutting into sheet flat material, uh, cutting in patterns, um, where you're pretty much cutting the majority of the material away to make it flexible and I've seen this a lot in kind of laser design so I'm going to have a go at this kind of uh, cutout but on the CNC. Right then, so I had a couple of attempts at 
creating my own cutouts. The first one was this, okay? We can see that's not very flexible in the slightest. So the idea was I've got this pattern uh, and I thought that um, this would work, but obviously uh, the thickness between each cut is too thick uh, and that's not uh, giving me flexy wood. It's kind of flexy, but it's not uh, what I wanted. So then I went ahead and thought, okay, well let's try using a bigger tool, okay? So this one I haven't even bothered cleaning up uh, because it's pretty useless. It's not bendy, but I think if I did bend it into shape, it's going to snap. So what I did then was I thought, okay, let's just really take the time to think about um, this spacing and the pattern that I'm using to create uh, the bendy wood and I came up with this design okay so here I'm pretty much just cutting all the way down uh, but leaving about an inch at the bottom uh, and then on the, uh, the bottom side it goes all the way up and then leaving an inch and then this pattern just kind of repeats itself all the way through and that enables me to create this bendy wood how cool is this so I was like a kid with Slinky when I got this working and I created uh, this bendy wood. So uh, how do I know in terms of my design um, how long I need to make this in order for it to go round into a circle to fit into my stool? So let's have a look in the software at how we're going to uh, draw this out and then we'll take a look at the toolpaths for this part too. Okay, so we're in BCarve. I'm going to open an existing file called Woodbending. So, how did I know uh, what dimensions that I needed to create? So it's fairly easy. So what I did was I measured the dimensions of a stool that we've got knocking around the office and it was roughly 17 inches high and the seat was roughly 16 inches in diameter. So I had a rough guide. So I went for the seat uh, and the base of the stool first and drew a circle which was 16 inches in diameter. So this would be uh, the actual seat diameter which matches the stool that I measured. Now in terms of the height how did I know how to work that out? So looking at my circle for my seat I created another circle that was offset inwards. Remember I was trying to create the look of a kind of cotton reel or um, a cable reel. So I've created this offset um, and this uh, circle is 13 inches in diameter. I then created another offset based on the thickness of the material that I plan to cut the bendy wood in, which is 0.354, and that uh, enabled me to create that circle. And so the idea is we're going to cut these seats out and the bases of the seats uh, with a pocket between these two vectors where we're going to pocket down a quarter of an inch for our flexi wood to slot into uh, to create the height um, of our stool. Right then, so in terms of the actual height of the stool, uh, like I said, I measured one that we have in the office. It's roughly around 17 inches. Uh, so I went with 16 inches wide, knowing that I'm going to have uh, some extra material from the actual base of the stool along with the seat of the stool. And so we're going to have a, pretty much a total height of just over 17 inches. And in terms of the um, the length of the bendy wood, what's going to go around here, how did I know how long I needed to create this cutout? Well, that's fairly simple, just a little bit of maths, um, and that's just working out the circumference of a circle. So I took the outer vector, which is has a diameter of 13 uh, inches times that by pi and that gave me this number here 40.840 and so many other numbers. So that was easy enough all I had to do was create um, a, a rectangle that had a width of 16 inches and a height of 40.84 and so once I've cut that out I know it's going to fit uh, within that circle. 
So that's pretty much it. So if we switch over to the toolpaths tab, you can see I have a profile pass here that's cutting out all of the patterned lines in order for us to make this wood flexible. And I'm using a 3mm end mill where I'm cutting all the way through. So looking at that pattern you've seen in my test cut earlier uh, that this was a success where we have a space and then we cut all the way through and then we have a space again cut all the way through and we just keep repeating that pattern so let's have a look at some of those dimensions so the space that we are leaving untouched is just under three inches um, and the gap between each cutout is 0.35 and this will uh, from my test piece uh, will definitely enable us to have flexible wood uh, that is pretty structurally sound as well so that's pretty much the main cutout there um, the ends you'll see I've got vectors here that represent uh, the top and the bottom of um, each one of those bendy wood cutouts where I have a profile pass using a V bit just simply cutting all the way through in order for us to create a chamfer and that chamfer will enable us to line uh, the flexi wood together around that circle and give us a nice seam. Uh, so that's that and then we have one final pass which is a profile cutout. You can see I've got uh, tabs in there to hold it in place and we're just going all the way through with a quarter inch end mill. So let's take a look at uh, the cutout for that. So in my own brief, I said to myself, well, what I'd like to do is to cut away at the plywood uh, in some fashion that enabled me to reveal the ply layers, just similar to the images that you can see on screen here. And so that was what I wanted. I wanted those ply layers to come through in the form of textures. And I wanted to cut this fairly fast. So I'm aiming to look at using large tools to help me with this. So let's take a look um, at those textures in the software. So we're going to go and open an existing file. And then we're just going to go into here and we'll take a look at the first stool. Okay, so this vector represents the actual uh, diameter of the stool. This vector represents the area that we're going to apply a texture to. Here you can see I've just got a series of straight lines that I've just used the array uh, copy tool to create. And then I've cropped them using this circle uh, and this trim option here. So if we switch over to the toolpaths tab, I'm just going to briefly run through this. Uh, you can see what I've got here is just simply um, a pocket just to create some cook depth already. Then I've got a texture. Now this is a texture toolpath. So I'm just using the selected vectors as a pattern where I'm ramping at the start and ends of each one of those vectors. I specify a maximum cook depth and a minimum cook uh, cut depth and then I could just go ahead calculate that and then I'm presented with something that looks like this okay so that would be my cutout so you can see it's getting deeper in the center uh, of some of those uh, and we've got a kind of a random pattern there so I know here this should give me uh, the reveal of the layers in that plywood not too concerned about these areas that have been cut into here as I have another profile pass here using a smaller V bit uh, just to 
polish that off for me to give me a nice uh, border in there and then we're simply just cutting that out okay so that was the idea with uh, that texture so let's take a look um, at another one so the next one I did was this one so here very similar uh, except this time I've got a series of circles where I randomly offset them inwards uh, using the offset tool at various um, measurements Going over to the toolpath, so I've got uh, my pocket pass in there, so if we just preview that toolpath, uh, and then I have the profile, just using that smaller V bit to create the border, and then I've got my cutout pass, and then my texture, again I'm using the texture toolpath here with those vectors, using the selected vectors as a pattern where I specify maximum and minimum cut depth to give me variation uh, where I could get something like this. So you can see I've got this nice pattern there. Right then, so let's close out there and we shall have a look at the third stool. So here I have nothing and if we switch over to the toolpath tab, all I've done is I have created um, a texture toolpath. So in the texture toolpath um, option, I've just selected that vector, uh, I've specified a start depth because I've already cut down a pocket by 0 0.075 and then here I've specified maximum and minimum minimum cut depth along with maximum and minimum cut lengths Ch altered the overlap and the step over and applied an angle and then it created something that looks like this okay so I quite like that you can see the uh, randomness in there perfect right then final one let's just close out and we'll take a look at texture 4 so here I use the Vector Texture Creator, which is this option here. So there's a few tutorials on that if you've not looked at that already. And that enabled me to create this really pretty uh, wave effect, whereby I just took those vector and used a profile toolpath um, using a 90 degree half inch cutter, just cutting on those vectors, and that created something that looked like this okay so I really liked the look of that there so those are the stools so what did I do about the tabletop so for the tabletop um, I opened up a spire and I really liked um, one of the texture area tiles so if I just tile the window so this is the pattern and I wanted to replicate this in my tabletop so what I did was I took that piece of clip art so you can find that uh, in your texture area tiles and it is this one here wave tile number two select the vector that I want to uh, fill that pattern into and then use this tool here uh, and simply press apply and there was the texture that I wanted. Uh, now for, for me this is going to take quite a while to cut because it's going to be a 3D cutout so rather than uh, doing a 3D toolpath on this, I thought, how can I replicate this pattern but just using 2.5D toolpaths? So what I did was I went into the drawing tab, used the trace bitmap option, and taking that component, I just simply uh, reduced the number um, the threshold in there so I'm seeing just these individual lines and I just simply hit preview apply and close so I've got the vectors for the shape of the waves then what I did was I simply went in there uh, into node edit mode and I just uh, deleted one side um, of the actual vector that it traced around like so so to delete that so I'm left with just an individual line that I can then uh, v-carve onto and I did that for all of those uh, different vectors so that I ended up with something uh, that looked like the file that I'm going to show you now so if we open up the toolpath file uh, you can see all the individual vectors there so when I come over and simply apply a profile pass on the vectors when we come to preview all of those toolpaths I'm left with something that looks like this okay so I really like that texture and it's going to 
be much quicker for me to cut. So that's pretty much uh, the textures there. Uh, so now what I need to do is I need to transfer all of those individual files onto my sheet uh, material. So let's have a look at the final sheet. Okay, so let's open up an existing file. We've got the table and stool sheet. So here I've basically transferred all of those textures and the dimensions that I knew I wanted to work with onto this sheet here. So I'm working with a full sheet material 0.91 inches thick. Working with the two sided parts because we need to cut into both sides of some areas of our designs. So looking at the top side, if I just switch off multi sided mode, you can see I've got the stool tops and bases. And in particular, we're looking at cutting the pocket area that we're going to put our bendy or flexi wood into to create the actual stool. We're going to cut at the um, table stand or table legs. So it's these two items here. They are going to slot together like so to create um, a full stand. And then those will slot into the underside of this table, which you can see here using this cross. The way we're going to keep the sheet aligned in terms of X and Y is using the dowel hole method. I've done lots of videos on two-sided machining and the, the dowel location idea. Uh, so I'll link you up to some of those videos, but it's exactly the same. Switch to the bottom side here and we're cutting the uh, textures for the four stool seats and the texture for the tabletop along with the final cutouts for each one of those. Now as this is a slot together part where the table legs need to slot together and then they're going to slot into this cross, we need to think about um, overcuts to ensure that our slot together parts uh, fit nicely together, they're not too tight neither are they too loose. Now in previous videos and projects that I've done I seem to find that the sweet spot for the overcut is 0.01 and you must make sure before you even run this file that you do your own test cuts of the various slot together parts to ensure that you're going to have a nice fit before you run the whole file as uh, your own material tooling and machining all vary. Uh, so. I always do test cuts and um, that's what I'm basing my test allowances on here. Now in terms of uh, the table legs, so these two are going to slot together and then they're going to slot into this area here. Now I'm going to put an allowance on this pocket of negative 0.01 so that's just going to overcut that by uh, 0.01 there to ensure that my two parts are going to slot into here. And for the table stand, uh, I'm only interested in applying an allowance for the actual slot part, not the overall um, shape. Okay, normally I just use the overall shape. Here I only want to apply it to here because I don't want to apply double offset um, sorry not offset overcut on uh, this area and this area here as well as the pocket so I'm only focusing on the slot so how do we do that so I've drew up this stand okay so I drew the shape out uh, drew a rectangle in the middle of uh, the shape so that's uh, it's this one here, so it is 14.75, so that's half of the overall shape of the stand. And then the height of that is 0.91, which is our material thickness. Now I want to just increase this slot size by that 0.1. One. So to do that, I'm going to select that vector into the set size. I'm going to make sure the anchor point is from the center, so it scales from the center. And draw link x, y. I only want to alter the height here, so 0 0.92. Press apply, and then that will change that for me there. Okay. So you may not have noticed that, but if I zoom in, and if we just take this 
portion of that rectangle into node edit mode and then if we press delete on the keyboard to delete that span so that we can cut in there and now if I zoom in we'll be able to see that overcut in which case I can simply trim that there and zoom out and zoom back in and trim that part there and we've got uh, the shape that we need. One final thing we must do on slot together parts is create fillets so that the uh, tool can get in all the way to the corner so we want to apply a fillet in there the tool I'm going to use is a quarter inch so I'm going to put an eighth inch radius dog bone fillet click and click and there are my uh, fillets like so and I've done the same for this one here so I just wanted to show you that technique by um, applying like an overcut just to the actual slot part not the overall uh, vector as part of a toolpath so over to the toolpath, let's see what we've got. So profile table legs with the compression cutter. So we're looking at the table legs here. We're going to cut all the way through using a quarter inch end mill. As I'm using a compression cutter, I'm going to make sure my first uh, cut depth is at point two. So that's going to clear the upward cutter uh, so I don't damage the top surface okay so that's purely uh, accounted for by measuring the upward part of the bottom of my tool so you'll need to check this uh, if that varies with your own tool um, and then we're going to machine on the outside I need to add tabs to my tool path so I'm just going to position them on the straight areas of uh, my table tops like so so click those in place um, like that. Okay, uh, add ramps and leads to the toolpath. So I'm just going to make sure we have um, a, a lead in and a lead out. So I'll make that say half an inch in there and then make sure we do that uh, on the lead in and then we could simply press calculate. It's going to warn us that we're going to cut all the way through. It's also been warning me that, that they may have reduced uh, some of the leads uh, which is okay in this case. So we can take a look and if we preview what we've got there we can see how that looks. Now if I just uh, take a look at that I can see it's coming straight in on uh, what could be a start point here. So I'm actually going to change that. So if we put that in Z, just tile the windows, close out of there and if I just go into node edit mode for this vector, yep, I can see the start point is there. So it makes more sense for me to change the start point to here. So if I press P on there, uh, if I take a look here, I'm also going to just press P on this point there and then if we just go ahead and just recalculate that toolpath um, you'll see that now we, we're not presented with that message for uh, the leads. Right then, so that's pretty much that. Then we have a pocket toolpath for the dowels and we've got pocket toolpath for the stools. So in here we're just going to be cutting uh, down and that's where the bendy wood is going to sit inside. So I've got an allowance here already of negative 0.005. Okay, I'm not quite sure if this is going to fit so I'm leaving it uh, quite small here. Um, and then when I come to cut that on the machine uh, I can then take my bendy wood and actually check physically check that it fits inside. If it doesn't then I can come back in here and make the changes so I can uh, basically overcut that. So you can see in the name I've basically uh, put in brackets there to check the fit after we cut that. Uh, we're cutting down a quarter of an inch uh, and that's pretty much uh, the top side and then we've got uh, the pocket for the table again I've got uh, that pocket allowance in there for my slot together part so again I'm going to tell you you must do your own tests for your allowances for slot together parts and so the underside so pretty much I'm going to do the dowels and the spoil board so that we can locate um, at XY uh, and then we're basically going to run through uh, all of the textures which you saw uh, just on the previous um, software segment where we looked at all of those textures. So if we just preview all of the sides here this is what our sheet uh, should really look like. So let's go and uh, run the file and uh, take a look at that. So now that 
that we've cut the top side, first thing I want to do before I take the material off the bed, uh, and that is to check everything fits in their pockets. So I'm going to take our bendy wood, and we're going to try that in one of the stool pockets. I'm also going to detab the um, table stand, and we're going to test the fit in the cross pocket that you saw in the file. So let's just take a look and hopefully this will work. If it doesn't, uh, by doing this while the material is still screwed down just enables me to tweak the file to create the extra allowances if I need to. So I did this at an allowance of um, negative 0 0.005, okay? So I'm just going to test this and uh, it's a little bit wobbly obviously because we've made it super flexible um, and I'm kind of thinking we might need to just go a little bit um, bigger here I'm kind of struggling to get this in so what I might want to do is alter the file so that it is uh, neg we have an allowance of negative 0 0.01 uh, in that case so I'm just going to detab the table stand um, and then we'll check the cross fit before I edit the file and create those extra cuts. Okay, so just to show you uh, the table uh, stand actually starts together. I don't want to push this down anymore uh, because I still need to finish this so I want to make sure I can take it off uh, with ease but that's a success. Um, so now I just want to run the tool paths for the pockets on the underside of the stool basis so that our flexi wood uh, can slot in there. So we'll go do that and then we'll catch up uh, to check, to recheck the fit of um, the actual flexi wood in that pocket. Okay, so we've added that extra allowance. We've got the flexi wood. I love this stuff, it looks so cool. Um, so we just want to check the fit again. Uh, so we'll pop that in there. I think you might want to have two hands. I'm, I'm kind of just managing on my own, so um, you can do it on your own, but two hands may be a little bit easier. Okay, so I can see that it's definitely fitting in place there. Um, so I'm happy with that extra allowance that we've put in. Uh, so now um, we can continue. So at this stage, all I have to do now is um, take our material off and then uh, we're going to run the dowel holes into the spoil board so that we can then flip the material over and everything will be aligned in X and Y. So uh, we'll get on with that um, and then we'll catch up later.
done. So all I'm going to do now is just give this a nice little clean up. So I've got uh, various sandpapers. I've got this uh, wire brush as well just to get in uh, in all the grooves just to clean those areas up. And then once we've done that we can then look at uh, pouring the resin. So we want to make this as smooth as possible. Uh, little fuzzies that may be present in each one of those textures. Okay, so I've started cleaning up this one here and this is really what I love about plywood. It's all of those layers and this is pretty much the reason why I want to do textures in plywood to reveal uh, all of those different layers, all those stripes. I'm loving uh, the look that we've got there. And this should be really nice when we fill that with resin. Okay, so I've just got two more uh, to finish up um, and then we'll look at the end result before we pour them. So uh, I think I've come into a little bit of a problem. Uh, so the table stands that we just cut out, uh, I think they may be a little bit on the small side, particularly at the bottom. Uh, I think we could do with making the bottom stands a little bit wider uh, to make it more structurally sound to be able to hold uh, the weight of the table top. So uh, I'm gonna go back into the software tweak with the, uh, the vectors for the table stand and then look at uh, cutting a new set out that's a little bit wider and hopefully that will give me a little bit more stability. Okay so let's take a look at the new chair leg. So I took the original design and I basically just stretched um, the bottom legs of the, uh, the actual table stand. Um, this enables me to basically cover more surface area uh, when we slot the two together to give us more stability. And so all I did was just use uh, the node edit tools and just uh, moved uh, areas up equally on both sides and to both parts. So it's now time to talk about the resin. Now I use a clear water polyester resin. Uh, this is fairly cheap, um, but it's very, very stinky. So you wanna make sure that um, when you're working with resin that you wear the appropriate safety gear. So that's uh, a, a mask and gloves. You wanna be in a well ventilated area. Um, and in hindsight, looking back at the project, I think in the future I'd like to try uh, epoxy resins rather than the polyester resins. Uh, I've since been told that they don't smell and they're much simple to use uh, as the ratios for each part are exactly the same. So I'd highly recommend that you do a lot of research before playing with resin. I am not experienced enough at using it to offer advice so much. My only uh, good advice that I can offer is to do your homework before pouring resin and make sure you research into uh, the resins that you intend to choose. So I can't really advise on which one to choose but each one has its own pros and cons. Okay. 
Okay, so the pouring of the resin. So you need to make sure you're working on a flat surface. So get a spirit level just to check that your area is flat. Um, and then you're going to mix your two parts together and slowly pour into the center of the textures. That way the resin can flood the parts evenly. One other thing that I didn't do that may be worth doing in hindsight and that's sealing the texture area first. On my first pour, after about five minutes or so, I had uh, quite a lot of bubbles, so I, I just popped them out. Uh, but I've read and I've been told since that you can use a heat gun to easily lift bubbles out. Like I say, I am an absolute beginner at this, so please feel free to leave comments with advice. Uh, all about using resin I will very much appreciate those comments um, as I'd like to try more projects using this but maybe not with polyester resin this time I'd definitely like to try out the epoxy stuff so uh, the resin cures in 24 hours or so it says um, and you need a nice warm spot for this to cure effectively and so um, I left this over a weekend um, in order for it to cure. So once uh, it's cured, we can then move on and uh, look at assembling the stools. So for extra security, uh, I'm gluing into the pockets of the stools using PVA glue. So starting with the flexi wood and the base of the stool, uh, we position that in place. Now it's very flexible so you may want access to an extra pair of hands. And so Sean helped me out with this part. So I'm lining the flexi wood into the pocket and holding that in place. Uh, while Sean secures it in place uh, with the help of a mallet. And so with that in place, that's uh, the easy part. Uh, the difficulty comes with aligning the stool seat to the flexi wood as you no longer have access to the inside of the stool. So in hindsight, to make this a little easier, you could look at making the base of the stool a ring shape rather than a full circle. That way you can access the inside. So we managed uh, with the original design where I aligned the stool seat to the top of the flexi wood and kind of put all my weight on it uh, while Sean went around each flexi strip pushing it into place. So this took about five minutes for each stool in total, uh, but we got there. And so there was the finished stool. How cool does that look? the finished table and stool set. So looking back at the brief, uh, with those textures you can see I've revealed those beautiful layers in the plywood there. I've managed to bend wood to create the stool base. 
uh, and then we've looked at uh, resin to finish that off, make it functional so we've got a solid flat surface but with it being clear we can actually see those textures. And this really was a huge experiment uh, where I've looked at new techniques that I've not used before. Uh, so that be in bending wood and working with resin and as a whole uh, the project worked out okay I think if I was to revisit this again I'd maybe look at trying out different resins and maybe sealing the wood before doing the pour to minimize the bubbles produced but as I say this was an experiment and I'm pretty happy with what I've achieved okay so that pretty much completes this build so if you want to have a go at cutting your own table and stool set then please head over to your Vinco account where you can download the project files there and if you do have a go at cutting this for yourself uh, then share that with us you can share that on Facebook, Twitter, uh, the Vetric forum. I'd love to see your versions of this design. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then please hit the subscribe button to get instant updates on the latest videos that we're releasing. Feel free to comment this video. Um, I'd appreciate any advice with some of the new techniques that I learnt, uh, especially resin. Um, and so thank you very much for watching and happy making.